Bob Chick back with you at Gold's Gym Venice with Charles Glass, Adam Kirby. Looks like we're ready for some legs today, Charles. Yes. Today what we're going to do, since he has like a little crook in his neck, we're going to just go from upper body down to lower body. And what we neglected to do last time was hamstrings. So I want to put hamstrings in. We're going to, first of all, do line leg curls. Now, Charles, with all your injury preventative exercises that we keep talking about over and over, I can't believe that Adam is actually pushing nerve in his neck. How'd you manage that one? Sleeping. Uh, either <laughs> so it is the one aspect that you're not in control of. No control. That's all on him. That's right. Well, you know what? It happens. But we'll work around it. I'm sure Charles has got a few exercises in store that can get right around that. But more importantly, work the hamstrings. Yes, we're going to get right to it. First of all, we're going to go to the line leg curl. And what we're going to do is do it a little different. We're going to start to like, squeeze the glutes tighter and okay. lift the quads up off the pads. That way we go a little bit more from insertion to insertion to build up better. Sounds like a plan, Adam. You know what? We'll get those hams so big you won't be able to tell whether you're coming or going. Let's see what you got. Let's go. One of the key things to do here is to also make sure that your lower abs stay tight so you don't have that little arch in your lower back. And as you go up, you lift your quads up off the pad. Now you're pulling more onto the hamstring, more of the tie-in up toward the top. There you go. Come on, do it again. Lift it up, squeeze. Give me 15 good reps. Come on. It's a light weight, but using that light weight is so much harder simply because all the contractions right there from the beginning. And you're not using the other muscles like your lower back to help pull or anything from the glutes. Good, there you go, come on. Get those quads up, quads up. Good, that's it, come on. That's it, two more, come on, give me two. Last one coming up here, come on. Pull it in, squeeze, there you go, good set. Ah. Charles, that technique is definitely different. I can see, obviously, like you said, these are coming up off the uh, pad. Uh, I would assume that you're not going heavy because you don't want to involve the lower back. Yeah, I'm trying to keep the lower back totally out of it. If you really squeeze your lower abs, you can't get your lower back involved. It's when you relax your lower abs, it makes you sway your back a little too much. Now you start pulling from the back and everywhere else. Exactly. It almost reminds me of the old school machines that were flat. And you had to kind of, you know, obviously pick it up because yes. you could do extensions or uh, hamstrings yeah. on it, but that would always kill your lower back. You not like the lower back. So we're trying to prevent that from here. But like I said, as long as you squeeze your lower abs, you have none of that lower back force. Another thing I like to do when I actually do this, I have people lift up in the front. So their body's up off the pad, totally. Now they squeeze. Lift up a little bit. Now squeeze. Look at the angle now. This is more drastic, but it's a much better pull for you. And it gets a lot tougher once your lower body's not there because when you're making contact, you still have the tendency to relax a little bit. When your body's up in the air, everything has to stay tight. There you go, look at that. And if you notice, he's not using very much weight, but the contraction's definitely there. Absolutely, especially by picking up on the yard. Oh, yeah. But that's not taking the hamstrings out of the motion, but rather putting no, more pressure on More pressure there. Now, if you notice, you can't lift his quads up quite as high, but the contraction is much better when the chest is up. There you go. That's it. Come on. Bring it in. There you go. That's it. Come on. Squeeze. So, I do it two different ways. This is the way I really like to do it, but the other way is just good by lifting the quads up. Come on. One more. One more. Give me one. Come on. Bring it in. Squeeze. There you go. Good set. Charles, let me ask you this, toes in, toes out, straight, doesn't make any difference. I've seen no. it done a hundred different ways. It, it doesn't really matter. You know, I mean, a lot of people like to point, but you can flex it and pull and mm -hmm. get a much better contraction than with your point. Pointing sort of takes it off, just, just a tad. The other thing I've noticed is by pointing your toes, and, and this is something I've seen for many, many years people doing wrongly, uh, by pointing your toes, you're actually picking up a lot more of the tendons in the back Thank and you. involving more of your calves and the hamstrings. Yeah, you, want, you don't hit the hamstrings then, the calves takes over right away. So you want to try to prevent that by keeping the flexed a little bit, relax, and just pull. And so contract. you always want to, what we call a flexed foot, right? All right, which is the opposite of a point, right? Okay, and but if, like I say, past that point doesn't make a difference whether your toes are in, out, or, or anything. That doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. How to feel? All right. Let's go to the back. We're going to do seated leg curl or hamstring. Seated leg curl. Let's do it. Okay, Charles, we made our way to the third room. We got the hammer seated leg curl. Yes, uh, I like this because it's plate loaded and it gives you a better feel because 
it's the same constant pull all the way through from start to finish. It's not jerky where on some of the machines, it's, it's easy at the very bottom, but it's sort of tougher at the top. So they start here, then it gets too light. This all the way through is the same. And this is an isolation piece, so I'd like to point that out. This is not a power movement. No. I've no, seen guys with all. four plates on here banging them away. They're not really doing a whole lot. Well, they're doing that because the eagle's got next to them a little bit. But they don't need that here. Adam has no ego. Either. Here we go. Now, if you notice, his knees sort of go up, right? So they get a better contraction inside. Watch, watch how he pulls his knees up a little, see? That's where he gets better contraction. There you go, good. You can tell Adam and I have been working together for a while, simply because he knows exactly how to pull those knees. Great, there you go, good. Nice, fluid movement, great, great piece. There you go, good. Pull it in there and squeeze that hand. Ready, hold it there, there you go, use the hand move. He's all the way through. Perfect, perfect. Come on. Give me two more. Two more. Come on. Last one coming up. Bring it back. Hold it there. Now let go. Easy. There you go. Good. Good. Now, if you notice, he's not getting momentum. He's mm -hmm. stopping, then he started. All right, cutting down on that pendulum yeah, swing we were fond of talking about. Yeah. And you can see his knees are actually coming off the pads. We can get a nice side angle yeah. view in yeah. here. You're going to see as he's pulling it down, his knees are actually coming off the pads. Yeah. He's using only hand strength to pull this weight up. He's actually pulling his legs in and then lift his knees up yeah. so that it stays off the pad. Come on. Here we go. That's it. Pull it, pull it, pull it. There you go. Last one right here. Last one. Come on. Bring it back. Please. There you go. That's it. Yeah. The same theme applies right throughout hamstring. Charles, I noticed his feet here also are in a flex position. His toes are not pointed. Better contract. Nothing you do in hamstrings actually. You have a, do you have you a uh, pointed point. yeah. uh, foot? Obviously, as it involves too much calf, again too much ligament into the back of the knee. That's where you're going to run into some problems there, and not be working the hamstrings. Eventually, you're going to get inflamed. Now you can't do the movement at all. Then he's got the uh, inflamed hamstrings to go along with his neck. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. You won't be training anything by the end of the week. <laughs> yeah. the uh, sets and reps scheme here? Well, actually what we normally do, since it's a small muscle, we're trying to build. So we don't go real heavy, but we try to get at least 10 to 12 reps. And once we go a little bit heavier than this, then we'll, we'll drop it down to 8 to 10. Mm -hmm. But I like to go below 8 reps because then it's useless for us. Yeah, and, and then obviously you're getting heavier then, which is count, counterproductive counter to what you're looking to do. How many total sets are we looking to do, not only on this piece, but in hamstrings in general? And if you think about it, it's a small muscle, all we need is anywhere from 9 12 sets. I normally try to stay in the frame with the nine. All right. All right, our next one we're gonna do is single leg curl. Uh, here we gotta go back to the front room again. Okay. And we're gonna use the machine. Hopefully no one's on it by now. You got <laughs> it. Single leg curl is gonna isolate even more. Come with me. Okay, Charles, we're back in the front room. We're on the Cybex machine. As you can tell, this is an oldie but a goodie, as you can tell by the beat-up paint. Uh, but this is one of the old survivors that we used to use. Tell me about it. Well, like I said, traditionally, this is the best machine we have here for the hamstrings. But, we, you know, like I said, we put our own little flavor to this right here. Uh -huh. Normally, what you do is you get on this, and you're on your hands and knees. Uh, and, but we hate that. Simply <laughs> because all it does is make you use your lower back again, and you're not really hitting the insertion on the hamstrings. So I sort of do it where we stand. Remember, traditionally we used to have an old standing piece. Yeah, that's right. They got rid of it, so we do it here. We sort of add some weight to the ground, so that gives us that lift we need. And then if we have the guy stand on one side and just 
press against it, but keep his body up straight, breathe his boots again, sure. stand with the hamstring knee. And, and one reason I can see that you're doing that, Charles, is you're actually creating a different piece out of this yes. than the line curls you were just doing. If you're doing this traditional style, it's really not much different. Adam, actually, if you can get down in position like you would do normally, you can see what I'm talking about. All right, and this is a normal position for this piece, but as you can see, this isn't really much different than what you were just yeah. doing. It was the same thing over there, so why are we gonna do the same thing? We create our own. Exactly. So, okay, and I'll see the difference. Now, obviously, I see, uh, as we look down here, we can pan right down, we can see you've got a stack of 25s that you've put on the floor that Adam's gonna obviously use to stand on. This is gonna put him up with about six right. inches. He's up in the air more now. All you're gonna do is just touch the pad, hold his body upright, and then squeeze and pull. You notice you stand tight in the glute, so that makes the contraction a lot greater. There you go. Squeeze it up. Really an isolation move. Good, yes. That's what it's for. That's right. Isolating the hamstring. Come on. That's it. Good. Bring it up. That's it. Good. Give me one more rep. One more rep. Good. Now let's change sides real quick. All you do is grab this, flip it over, and now we're ready to go. Hold the position. There you go. Ready? Good, that's it. Come on, squeeze your stomach here, squeeze your stomach. There you go, good. Stay tight now. That's it, bring it up. Come on, bring it up. Good, there you go. Come on, stay with it. Good, come on, bring it up. That's it, a little higher now, a little higher. Get that contraction in there. Good. If you notice, he stops at the bottom, then he starts contracting again. Let it stretch out, contract the muscle there. Good step, wow. Now, just to know, show you, just to show you what an isolation exercise this is, Adam's got tens on there. Oh yeah, because I'm telling you, you can barely use those <laughs> wow. tens. It's a, such a great pump. I mean, the intensity of the contraction on this is much greater than when you try to do this because most of you, your whole body is starting right, right, hanging the weight up, but you're not stopping and then starting over. So you're using all the other muscles rather than the hamstring. Charles, when we talk about isolating a muscle group, what you're really talking about is maximizing the efficiency of what you're training and taking out other muscle groups. When you're actually down in position, you've got the arms that are working, you're pulling on the handles, uh, the back muscles are gonna come into play, yes. and that's exactly what you're trying to not do. We won't do that, period, because what we're doing, we're barely touching the pad, and we're pushing our body in the upright position, squeezing the glutes to block all the other muscles out. So what plays? Hamstring. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's so much easier. So how much I struggle with the tens. When I go here, it's sure. like, Look, there's, there's no nothing. way. There's nothing. There's nothing there because he used all the other muscles there. Sure. Cool. But now being isolated is totally different. It's got to be a real eye opener when you get some of the pros in here getting ready for the Olympia and other shows that you've been uh, well, that's preparing guys for for many years, and all of a sudden you throw them something like this. They're used to putting three plates on each side. No, no, they don't do that here. <laughs> that's right. They don't do that here. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready? Squeeze, stay tight. Grab the shoulder, grab the shoulder. There you go. Come on. Good. That's it. Stop the bottom. Now bring it up. Good. That's it. That's it. Come on. Good. Come on. Give me one more. Come on. Come on. That's it. Good. Good from top. There you go. That's it. That's it. Come on. Good. Perfect, perfect. Come on, bring it up. You know what? You don't feel anything on the lower back. There's no muscles being used here. Come on. Good, good. There you go. If you notice, you can tell he fatigues right away. Same amount of weight. You're not going to need a whole lot of these, I can tell right off oh, the no. bat. No, not at all. And the only thing I want to do next is I want to show them something that we do a little different for our deadlifts so I can get that muscle stretched back out. So we can go over to the hat. And we do it over there. One thing I've noticed, Charles, is uh, obviously you have a tendency to cut down the total amount of sets. You have a lot of isolation movements uh, built into your routines uh, to just completely take a muscle group, isolate it from the rest of the muscle groups, and really train it intensely. You have to bring the amount of sets that you do down. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. What am I going to do? Destroy the muscle? Exactly. You know he's going to either he's going to pull a muscle, tear a muscle, or he's just going to be able to move it anyway. The reason why I want to bring that up is a lot of guys out there looking to, to put on some muscle, getting ready for shows, have a tendency to do more sets anywhere between 16 and 20, sometimes 24 sets. If you're doing isolation, you really can't and shouldn't do 20, 24 sets. Not at all. For a small muscle group, all you need is anywhere from 9 to 12. And you can keep it at 9, it'll be perfect. Okay. So 
for the sake of showing you something different, I want to show you what we do for stiff legs. Sounds good. Let's go. Uh, traditionally, we, you know, we do deadlifts from a barbell or dumbbell, whatever you want to say. But I found out after a while, your arms get tired. So what we're going to do is do the same type of deadlift, step leg deadlift move, and just stretch those hamstrings out by using the hack squat machine. All right, get in position. Feet on the floor and the heels on the platform. Now all we do is catch it for the bottom and we stretch back. Let it stretch the hamstrings out. Now squeeze the glute as you come in. Ready? Let it stretch it out. See? Your shoulders are taking most of the blunt, of the pressure, so your arms are never really tired. It's never really pulling you down, dragging you down. This is so easy and it's so effortless that you don't use all your power trying to hold the bar in your hand. Shoulders take it, it's a nice stretch. How's that on the lower back, Charles? There's no pressure on your lower back. If you do it right, there should be any pressure on your lower back. There you go. Let it stretch, let it stretch. Let it stretch, there you go. I mean, I have guys go up to four plates and they still don't feel pressure on the lower back. That's it. You squeeze the glutes when you come up. As you squeeze those glutes when you come in, you totally isolate what? The hamstring. There's no lower back play. Everything's on the ham. And it hits the tie in the glute and hamstring muscle at the top. By squeezing, coming in, tighten it up. Yes. There you go. Last one. Come on. Yes, yeah. yeah, tremendous stretch. Well, that's a stretch. Yeah. But Charles, I want to make note as we're filming this, uh, the weights that Adam's using are real weights. Yes. Okay, so we're, this isn't play for the camera. We're not just demonstrating. This is real-time weight that he's using. Some guys a little stronger, obviously. Some people not as strong. Uh, but this isn't demonstration purposes. This is isolation and bodybuilding. He's getting ready for a show. These are the weights he's using. Oh, we're not playing with the weights, bro. Right. It's real. Right. Okay, Charles, another successful hamstring workout. Take me back to what we just did. Well, first of all, we started with line leg curl, which is pretty much, that's the foundation of the whole thing. And when we do it, by lifting our body up, we're contracting more. It's a part of contraction. Uh, you don't have to use a lot of weight. I like to try to prevent from pulling muscles, so I try to use the lightest weight as possible, but get the most out of what we're doing. So then from there, we go to ham tractor, which is in the back, and we use the plate loaded machine. And Adam does it really good simply because what he does is he slow it down and he squeeze and he lift his knees up so he can get a better contraction in the hand. And when you release it, it's not just letting it fling up, but it controls sure. it out. And each movie has control and it does it very well. So from the, from the seated, we come out here to single leg. Why? Because we want to isolate the muscle a little bit more, but use the one leg at a time, see which side is bigger than the other. But like I said, he does that the same way, control. Everything is controlled for him, and it's much better. That's why his hamstring is growing and will continue to grow as long as he does not control. Sure. And also always a good idea to uh, integrate uh, single leg movements or single arm movements as it would be if you're training upper body yes. uh, with things that are using both at the same time because you don't want a dominant leg or arm as, as the case might be to that's, overtake. That's why we do a single leg because you want to make sure both arms work, both arm or both legs are working moving and independent of each other. And one thing you never do, and I get this question asked to me a lot, you don't ever use a different weight in one arm than you would in, in, on another, let's say for a curl. Uh, somebody's got a weaker arm, they always ask me, hey, can I use a 30-pound weight in one arm and a 40-pound weight in the other? Well, the only way you do something like that, you're trying to rehab. But then they're doing one arm at a time, right. one arm just sitting down at their side. But other than rehab, no, it should be the same. The weak arm will catch up to the strong yeah. arm, or weak leg catch up to the strong leg, depending yeah, on whatever you're work. training, yes. just by your training itself. Yep, you're absolutely right. All right. Adam, how's the neck doing, buddy? It's getting better, you know. Hanging in there? Yes. Yeah, blood flowing, it's healing. I'll be good to go. Nice thing about isolating, uh, you were able to do hamstrings or any other body part. It doesn't even affect your neck. Exactly. That's, a, that's the important thing about, you know, learning how to train around injuries. Yeah. There's always things you can hit. You know, if your shoulders hurt or your neck's hurt or whatever, you can always keep hitting the legs or, you know, calves, work on your weak points, things like that. So that's what we do, that's what Charles has taught everybody to do and taught me how to do it and uh, it's a valuable lesson, you know. Sure. And Charles, as much as we try to prevent injury, and I know we talk a lot about uh, that a lot, uh, injuries are going to happen. They're a part of bodybuilding, they're a part of obviously trying to move up the food chain when it comes to lifting weights and all that. Uh, you have to be able to work around injuries in order to stay in the gym and make progress. You know, it's not, it's not a point that we never go heavy. It's just when, the, when my guys go heavy, I'm right there to spot. I know when they, I can feel it in my own arms when they're lifting, I'm right there to support. Sure. So if they're ever going to miss, 
they're not going to get hurt because I'm going to either grab the weight, pull it off. I'd rather get hurt than have them hurt. Because if they're hurt, that's it for them. If I get hurt, I, have, I can stand there and say, do this. <laughs> no, but they can't do that. So I'd rather be there and make sure you don't get hurt and then keep it going. The more you're in the gym, the better you are.